Hey everyone, today we'll be covering part one of the Super Closet Cabinet Grow from Seed to Flower. I normally don't break down single grow logs into multiple parts unless there's good reason to do so. And this is one of those times where there's just so much going on, especially in the flowering stage, that it makes sense to split it into two parts. So to start, this is the Super Flower Grow Box from Super Closet. It's an all-in-one grow cabinet system that comes with everything you need to start a grow, including an airflow fan, grow light, carbon filter exhaust fan combos, and even a security camera. It took a little bit to put it all together, but now that everything's set up, let's give it a whirl. To start, I'll be using these Pioneer Pots I got from a company I talked with at a convention recently. And these are really cool in that they're similar to air pots, but with a solid outer shell to protect the roots a little bit more from the outside environment, as well as lifting the base off the ground. The opening at the bottoms are quite large though, so the plan here is to fill the bottom layer with some rocks first. Uh, yeah. What I meant was the plan is to first layer the bottom with the fabric and then add in some rocks to hold it all in place. Next, I'm going to fill it with some basic potting mix. And yes, we're going with the yellow and green bag, that's super shitty. But even though I would never recommend using a potting mix with built-in synthetic fertilizers, I still get asked a lot how to make it work with something like this from new growers that don't have access to anything better. So yeah, let's go over it real quick. Potting mixes that uses synthetic fertilizers, so anything that typically says feeds up to 3, 6, or 9 months, utilizes these little pellets that slowly releases a set amount of fertilizer over a long period of time. And honestly, these work pretty well for most plants, and that includes hemp for most of its life cycle. The problem is that all these pellet blends are high in nitrogen, which needs to be cut down significantly during the flowering stage to allow the buds to develop properly. So if the fertilizer is still active in the soil during this time, it's going to be detrimental to the flowers. However, I found that you can mitigate a lot of this by flushing the soil with water after the plant starts to flower, but I'll touch on this a little later. For now, I'm adding in two clones that I left out in the humidity dome for way too long without water. And you can see here that they're in pretty bad shape and it only got worse as it seems like all the original leaves are dying out. But surprisingly, new growth started to appear in both plants. So I guess it was transplanted just in time. I also added a layer of panda film to the floor of the super closet, cause even though I blocked the bottom, a little bit of soil keeps leaking out from the sides each time I water. So yeah, even though solid pots in general are easier to clean and reuse after each grow, I still like working with fabric pots just because they're a lot less messy during a grow. The left plant also seems to have split itself into four main side stems, which is pretty cool since that means I don't really have to train it to grow bushier. And you can see that the amount of fertilizer in the soil was initially too high for the clones. With all the first leaves being pretty dark green in color and showing signs of nutrient burn on the leaf tips. But from experience, I know that as the plant gets larger, it'll be able to utilize more of the nitrogen in the soil. So I'm not too worried yet of a fertilizer toxicity. The good part though is that I'm able to just water with plain tap water for this entire first half of the plant's life cycle. And while we watch this plant grow a little larger, I have a little bit of time to talk about how this cabinet works. 
So the cabinet itself is around 3 by 2 by 6 feet tall, which is a good size for one huge plant or two medium sized plants. And there's these two custom carbon filters attached to PC fans that are used to exhaust the air out. All the wiring exit out of these PVC elbows to prevent light leak. And the front doors are also lined with foam to prevent light leak as well. And just having a door to swing open and close makes this so much easier to work with than zippers. The steel frame also allows me to stick magnetic objects to the walls on the inside and outside. And this gave me a ton of flexibility in customizing the cabinet even more, as you'll see in part 2 of this grow log. But for now, the right plant is getting a little too tall, so I'm using plant ties to tie it down, which will trigger the plant to develop its side stems more, ultimately creating a bushier plant that utilizes more of the empty horizontal space. You can also see the newer growth now is getting a little bit lighter in color, which means that the plant is starting to use up the excess nitrogen in the soil at a correct pace, because this shade of green is much more normal than this. The low stress training is doing a good job of introducing side stems to this right plant. But since the main stem is still growing a little taller than everything else, I'm just going to pull it down again to allow the side stems to catch up to it. And we'll let this grow a little larger now in the vegetative stage so that the plant can fill up this cabinet. Now that we're near the end of the vegetative stage, it's time to flush out as much of the built-in synthetic nutrients as we can. And this just requires soaking the soil with a bunch of water. Let it sit for a couple minutes to dissolve any of the built-up nutrients, and then washing it away again with more water. This method works pretty well with the synthetic fertilizer pellets because they react specifically with water, having its outer coat dissolve every time it's in contact with it. So by letting it soak for a while and then washing away what was released, it really does speed up the process of getting rid of what's left in the soil. Finally, I'm doing a tiny bit of defoliation on the lower leaves and stems, just so that nothing's touching each other but I'm going to be leaving all of the flower sites intact because I'm trying something new in the flowering stage that will hopefully be able to fully maximize the yields of all these lower flower sites. And yeah, we're good to flower now, so I'll see y'all in part 2 of this grow log. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital, with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.